Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I've got my, my buddy, Emmy, here. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I was laughing with Emmy. I said this on Aquarius Rising Africa on Monday. As you guys know, I'm in Florida right now. And um, I'm kind of limited as to where I can film. And um, I'm filming from the bed. So I kind of look like a Victorian grandmother, like in her be her deathbed right now. But this is literally the only place I can film. And I, I do have a bra. On, so at least I have a bra. On. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you guys, sometimes the trolls are very annoying, but sometimes they make me laugh. I think I also said this on Aquarius Rising Africa. Someone I filmed with, I had read a comment where somebody said that the person on screen <laughs> looks like a Victorian ghost child. <laughs> And so hopefully at least I don't look like a Victorian ghost child. <laughs> oh my God. So hard at that. I was like, I know that's a troll, but that is, I've never heard somebody like cut someone down by saying it looked like a Victorian ghost child. And I was like, I'm gonna <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to have to use that because troll, you're a total asshole, but that was funny. <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> So anyway, guys, Stephanie could not join us today as I blow my nose because she is, um, she's got a reading, she's got a client. And so it's just me and me today. And I wanted to start this off. We are going to be talking again about shadow work, but it's really important today because I was just telling Emmy that we have over 200 people that I have since emailed a template for the 30 day challenge starting in November. And that is unbelievable i am so excited i've gotten a lot of you left me messages as i i i got up at three o'clock this morning to start sending the emails out to people and you can still if you haven't emailed me yet you have until monday so i'm still checking that account so i can continue to send the template away once again as i said before if you email that actual email shadow work challenge at gmail your name will go into a raffle for the end of the month to potentially win some prizes. But if you do, don't want to enter the raffle, but you do want to do the challenge, um, starting on Monday, October 31st, I will be placing every day. The day before, the evening before, I'll place the next day's challenge on my community tab. I sent a, a copy to Emmy as well. And Stephanie, maybe they can post it on their community tab each day too, just to help you guys keep up with where we are in the challenge. And um, what I wanted... I, Earlier this week, I was telling Emmy, and Emmy's got some incredible stories to share too, but we talked a lot earlier this week about motivation and discipline. And something I wanted to talk about, again, is that I just, uh, the idea of discipline, which leads to devotion, which is your sadhana. And something I want to remind people, especially if you're new to exercise, um, nobody likes exercise. <laughs> oh, I think I lost Emmy. Where'd she go? Can you hear me, Emmy? It says you're still here. I can. I just have a, a child walking through my office. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, damn it, powers that be. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Emmy is the Victorian ghost child and she just left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people, especially us in the West, we're very lucky in the Western world because we live moderately very comfortable lives, you know, and that's that that blessing isn't lost on me. But I think sometimes we have this uh, perception of other people that is not true. And I think sometimes we think that when we see a really fit person, that they mu just must love exercise. Well, as somebody who is a really fit person who's been doing this for 16 years, I'm going to sit here and tell you, I, I exercise six days a week, probably five of those days. I don't want to do it. I'm like, ugh. But my discipline, I've, I've, I've gotten to the point of discipline and devotion of doing it because it needs to be done. So I want you to understand, like, especially when it comes to the cardio portions, which even in yoga, there's a little cardio. When the heart rate starts to rise, when the muscles start to burn, don't quit. You're not the only one feeling that. Even the, the, the you know, my dad used to laugh and say, runners never smile. Yeah, because they're, it's uncomfortable. They're not smiling. It's uncomfortable, you know? So, so I just wanted to put that out there that don't, and, and with that being said, that should be liberating. So when you're doing these exercises and you feel that sensation and your ego saying, just stop, just stop, just stop. Know that the, you know, 200 other people around the world doing it with you are feeling the same sensation. And I'm feeling the same sensation too. 
And if you have to pull back a little bit, pull back a little bit, but don't give up. And so, Emmy, I'm going to let you, since you've you've started the, embarked on the new journey of Ashtanga Yoga, so you're heading a whole new direction of pains and aches and uh, new body making, old body breaking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Um, yes, I I'm grateful that I. I'm doing the Ashtanga in this stage of my growth and healing process um, because I've had time to learn how to meditate, which there's a lot of misconceptions around meditation. People get very, very frustrated and they give up really quickly because oh, I can't quiet my mind. It's just racing. I can't do it. I can't do it. The goal of meditation is not to quiet your mind. The, the goal is to observe. Yes. So if your mind, if you've got monkey mind, all of us get monkey mind, even the ones who've done years and years of shadow work and yoga, everybody gets monkey mind. It's just part of being human. The goal is to observe, just look at it, just witness it, just be there, be present. So because I have that um, established already, When you're in the thick of it in yoga and you have sweat dripping in your eyes and off your chest and it's tickling you and your muscles are burning and you're shaking and you just don't think that you can hold the pose for one more second and you're in ego, like, I want to quit. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Be the observer. Okay. I'm observing myself saying I want to quit. I'm observing myself shaking. I can't hold my leg up anymore. It's, it's falling down. I'm observing that. I'm observing that um, I'm out of breath, that I'm sweating, and that um, I want to give up and that this hurts. I'm just observing that. Okay. Like it's a red ball on the floor. No judgment, no attachment. I'm just watching. I'm just observing. And when you can do the practice from that point of view, I see how it can become a meditative process. You know, I'm still very much in the intellectual phase of learning the flow, learning the sequences. Um, so I'm not quite to that meditative state yet, but I have had periods and moments where I'm just in this other place. And even though it's really difficult and really challenging and it's, it's painful. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. it, it it's, it's so amazing. It, it's otherworldly. It's very surreal. It's like a God moment and it's, and it happens to everyone. That's why with Ashtanga yoga specifically now on the 30 day challenge, I didn't put much yoga in, but a little bit with the Ashtanga nurse, because you really do need a teacher because it's so funny. I mean, there was a comment on the video, the practice I did with you and Stephanie, where you and Stephanie allowed me to film you, me teaching you. And someone left a comment and I'm just paraphrasing. I thought this is brilliant that this person's relatively fit, but they tried it and their ego got an ass kicking because the practice challenged them in ways they never been challenged. Yoga is going, uh, traditional yoga, proper yoga is going to challenge you in ways that the bar, the kickboxing, the other things aren't going to challenge you in. With that being said, the bar, the kickboxing, everything else can be a model of the yoga practice in theory. And that's what we're using in a challenge. But that's why you, I did very little yoga in this challenge, because you need a teacher there to help you navigate things. Because with the yoga asana, with the postures, the way that they're created and designed, they're designed to be like a bulldozer and to dig deep within you and deeply pull out real it's, it's cliche to say, but you know, a lot of spiritual practices will say your body is like an onion. It's layered. Like your, your emotions are layered, but it's true. And with Ashtanga, especially you'll get through the whole primary series, you know, 10 years down the road and you think you've conquered all these demons that you got. And then you get to second series and it goes a little bit deeper and all of a sudden there they are again, mm. you know? And so the practice is constantly bringing you back to review your wounds. And I'm going to say this, and I hope this makes sense. The ego, so Emmy's right, that ego is that voice saying, oh, just give up. This is painful. This is hard. 
Well, why does the ego do that? Well, the ego is the part of you that will one day die, right? That, that ego will one day die with your body. And so that's the part of you that fears death. But that ego is not the real you. Does that make sense? And so that's why it doesn't want you. It's almost like that fear of not existing. It's that fear of not being who you think you are versus who you really are. And so the exercise is my, it, that's why I, I, um, I think it's one of the best modalities for anybody and really any exercise to really explore themselves. And Emmy's right. And Ram Dass says this all the time. I love the way Ram Dass says that. So let's say you're doing a kickboxing video or you're doing yoga or you're doing bar and all of a sudden you get to a certain pose or a certain place in the exercise where you're triggered where your ego is going, this is bullshit. I can't do this. Instead of buying into that narrative, observe it and be like, well, that's interesting. As Ram Dass used to say, just look and be like, huh? Well, isn't that interesting? That's mm -hmm. how I reacted to this particular move. Interesting. And leave it at that. It's interesting. Because over time, what's going to happen, and this is why I'm having you journal so much during this process and emmy is the reiki part of this she can explain deeper it's it's um and the saturdays in this challenge are self-study saturdays the third saturday is reiki you're gonna have to go research some reiki and i put a lot of emmy's videos up for you to watch to start to understand what this subtle body energy actually is that that's really what's triggering a lot of stuff um I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> the, uh, the energy that's moving, it, when we're journaling, what's going to happen is with the exercises, it's going to, the body, that's where I was going. The body holds different pockets of information. It's like your body is its own filing cabinet. And so like we have, like I remember, well now everything's computerized, but I remember when I was a kid, like my dad would have a desk and like one filing cabinet was for taxes. Another filing cabinet was our health reports. Another filing cabinets was this or that or business stuff. And um, your body does the same thing. So like we know the chakras have different. So there's different places where the body is going to take in sensation, take in memory and store it for you. And so if there's a broken heart, if there's something going on in the Muladhara and something triggers that, so opens that filing cabinet back up and pulls a file out, for you to review that's where the journaling is going to help you sort through this and figure things out about yourself and i tell my students a lot in uh, my live students like in real life i tell them one of the hardest things about taking on a spiritual practice is realizing the dark stuff about yourself the times when you're an asshole that you didn't even realize you were being an asshole because you're projecting your own pain that you didn't even realize was there because the ego doesn't want to touch it does that mm -hmm. make sense yeah. The ego too. The ego is like, I like to think of it as um, a program, a computer program. It's software. Yeah. And it's designed to gravitate toward pleasure and away from pain. So when you're in the thick of your practice and it's hurting and your muscles are sore and they're shaking and your, your ligaments feel tight and the tendons are burning. And I mean, I ended up with bruises on my shoulders. I had these weird little cyst like bumps that would, that came through. They're gone now, but they came through. Um, so the ego says, oh, this doesn't feel good. I don't want to do this anymore. Please stop. You know, so, so you have to observe that. Observe that, like Bryce said, hmm, this is interesting. And if you have an area of your body that is especially weak, or you have a lot of pain and you're going through these um, asanas and postures, um, it's important to understand what kinds of pain are okay to proceed with and what kinds you should pull back. Like if you have any kind of really deep seated pain in your joint, pull back a little bit. If it's muscular or tendon or ligament and it's just burning and, and hurting. And, I, and guys, I have been so sore that I couldn't pick up a glass of water. I've had to go like this to put my mascara on. Yep. You know, that that's not pain that you back away from. You can still work, work through that. And I've cried. I've cried. It hurts so bad. Um, 
But what that's telling you is that there is something stored in your tissues that you need to work through. So um, I was journaling and, okay, I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory. So when I was, um, I don't even know, between five and 10, um, I had a traumatic experience with an irresponsible purchase that my dad had made. He had taken the taxes and insurance money and bought this huge setup with a synthesizer and speakers and all of this stuff. So my mom then had to use bill money to pay the taxes and insurance because we were going to lose our house. They were going to put, they were going to take the house. And so we went without food and electricity for a time. And so because I was in an impressionable age, I equated irresponsible spending with lack of basic human needs. And <clears throat> the shoulders symbolically and spiritually um, can have stuff to do with your parents. And when I was seven years old, I was involved in a, an accident. My mom was driving. My sister and I were in the back seat. Um, I was sleeping. She got T-boned. She was turning the corner left uh, at a red light. She got T-boned by someone who ran a red light. We had minor injuries. I had a broken collarbone. I sustained the worst of the injuries. My mom and sister both had um, cuts that they needed stitches for. So we were, we were very much protected. And um, shortly after that, around that same time is when that happened with my dad. So that experience and, and all of that ended up in my shoulders. And I've carried that my entire life. And this is the first time in my healing journey that I have, you know, worked through this area in my physical body. You know, I've done a lot of work on resentments and that particular um, correlation between irresponsible spending and um, uh, going without basic human needs was something that came up in the resentment work that I did um, with the 12 steps. So this is another layer. And um, it was just so incredibly profound having this stuff come up and having more insights come through and just seeing the whole picture. Um, there's another thing that came through too. Um, we had a situation this past summer where we had someone staying at our house um, and they're not very healthy and they're in active addiction and we're engaging in um, a lot of escapism. And it was very, very stressful for me because um, I have worked so very hard to come out of codependent relationships. And I didn't want to have, I didn't want to be in a situation where I was allowing this person to exhibit this behavior in my home. It, it was just, it was so triggering. Um, but the reason why it was so triggering had nothing to do with the person, which is what I thought it had to do with. What it had to do with was my sister. My sister died at the age of 29 from end-stage liver disease from drinking and drugs. She killed herself. And I watched her die in a hospice house. And it, I was so helpless and powerless over this situation. And I had no idea that the reason why I was so triggered when this person was living with us over the summer had nothing to do with her, had everything to do with my sister. And that did not come out. And I was not able to address that or heal that until doing yoga. Stuff is stored in our bodies. So now, you know, now I can go back and I can work through um, the ways that I felt powerless and helpless with my sister. I can forgive myself. I can forgive her. Um, so, yeah, that's just that's the kind of stuff that will come up. So journaling is really important. Um, even if nothing specific is coming up, if something is bothering you, um, just keep writing about it. You know, automatic writing is really good too. Um, there's another name for it, but I can't think of what it is. 
And I'll say on top of that too, like sometimes I tell my students this all the time, like when we think about thoughts that come up, sometimes we automatically want to put a story to that thought. But sometimes the thought that comes up is merely just an emotion, right? So sometimes in this process, you're going to hit a posture or hit a movement um, for the bar. It's a lot of the tucking of the pelvis for many people where all of a sudden you're flooded and inundated with this emotion. It's almost like someone popped the cap off of, um, you know, those silly strings where all of a sudden this emotion just pops up and takes over you and you don't know where it came from. You don't understand why you're feeling the anger or why you're feeling whatever it is you're feeling. And that's okay. Sometimes you will figure out where it came from, especially in the pelvic region of these exercises. I have to talk about this with women a lot. Um, for women, when we get into the pelvic region of Malabandha or any type of Upavishakonasana, stretching open the legs. For women who have been, um, being careful what I say for you too, but have been uh, A-B-U-S-E-D um, in that area, if that makes sense, against their will. R-A-P-E or simply just touching in that area. A lot of times that will trigger itself and come up. And sometimes I've heard people say it could be a past life experience that's still being held within your energetic because you have your physical fascia and you have your energetic fascia. And, and that's okay if that comes up. Um, you have to write about it though. And especially if you don't, and here's the thing, like my trauma therapist used to say this too. Like if you never remember, like a lot of times with those types of things, for women and men too, the brain will block out the memory. And if the bra if the brain has literally blocked out the memory, as my trauma therapist used to say, it's not necessarily important for us to then try to recall it. What's important to do is to work through your emotion, the fear, the anxiety, whatever it is that's still left over. That's that the 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 story the body might have might have rejected, but the sensation. To survive, the body kept. All right. And so if we think about like sexual stuff, for example, if, if for some people who are victims of that, maybe they don't have a, a healthy relationship with their partner when it comes to that. Maybe it's, it's, maybe it's just a trust issue they have with men. And so that's what needs to be healed. Does that make sense? And so that's why the journaling is important too, because it helps you filter through that without necessarily having to go there. Now, luckily for Emmy, she could remember. And some people are going to be, be able to pinpoint it back to certain things. Um, but if you don't, that's okay too. It's just working through that emotion and understanding. I want to say this too, and Emmy can attest to this because both Emmy and I have been on this journey of self self healing before we knew each other for many, many, many years with different modalities. And I think Emmy can attest to this as well as me. It's not one and done, is it? Oh, no, no. Uh, another thing, too, I want to add to what you're saying, Bryce, is a lot of us who have grown up in abusive families were abused or suffered abuse before we learned how to talk. Yep. So when, when, you, have, when you have things happen to you that is, is pre-conscious memory or, or pre-verbal, mm -hmm. it's stored in the body just like everything else but we have no recollection of it. Um, there's, you know, it happened in a time of our life when there's no way that we could communicate back to someone else what's going on. Um, so that's why the journaling is just so important. Like back to the story that I was saying um, with my sister and the person that was living here this past summer for about six weeks. Um, I had worked through resentment that I had um, against her and I, I completely forgiven myself and her for um, what happened. If I saw her today, I'd give her a big hug. But every time I would think about, I would still be bothered. I'm like, why am I bothered by this? And in writing it down, it was like this epiphany. And I wrote it down probably eight times. I was writing about this about eight times. And then all of a sudden it's like, this had nothing to do with her. It had to do with my sister. I was trying to save her. I was trying to save my sister through this other person. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing what comes up. It is so much more than exercise. <laughs> 
So, and I want to express that too. And I, I put this in the opening to the challenge. I just sent Emmy the template. What I like to refer to this as intelligent exercise. And I'm not saying that, you know, bodybuilders or sports people aren't intelligently exercising. They're just intelligently exercising in a very different way. I want to express to you guys, I, and I've said this, I'll say this until I'm, I'm blue in the face. I don't give a rat's ass what your yoga practice looks like, what your bar dancing looks like. You're not in competition with anyone. The only reason why we're using exercise is for you to be able to understand what it is your body is trying to tell you. Um, because when it's intensified, when the body is brought to a point of intense heat and friction, you're not going to be able to escape sensations unless you quit, unless you stop. And so it brings you to a point of total, total vulnerability to yourself. So I don't, and I put, you know, at the beginning of the challenge, I have a section where I tell you to take a picture of yourself optional at the beginning, at the end. I'm not doing this about weight loss. I don't care. I don't want people weighing themselves anyway. Like I'm not a believer in weighing yourself because I think sometimes the ego can take over and numbers are just numbers. They're just numbers, you know, and, and, but with the picture, what I'm hoping people will see is not just, yeah, you're going to see some changes in your body, but I want you to notice your eyes, the changes in your eyes. You had a picture you sent us, Emmy, from before you started your journey. And you mm -hmm. see that people look like different people. And it's because, and I said this with Shanti once, and it, it, the more you allow your heart to break, the more the light can shine through. Mm -hmm. So the more you allow yourself to go to that place of vulnerability, the more you're going to feel compassion for yourself. Yes. And when you feel the, that. Oh, go ahead. Remember the, the goal of yoga is to free your mind, not to have perfect postures or asanas, not to have a perfect flow, not to look like. Um, exactly. It, the goal of yoga is not that. It's to free your mind. And today I fell eight times. Eight times I fell today in my practice. If, if we would have been recording. <laughs> Girl, I faced up. I planted so many times. Like it's David uh, uh, Green used to like come behind me and like, because a lot of times in a lot of these postures where we're supposed to build, bend our elbows, we, we lock because of fear of falling. And so, and that's a psychological, that's, and that's why that, that transition is in there to, to challenge that fear. And in the vice room, David, uh, Greek would come by and just push you down so that you would fall because sometimes that's what you need is to fall so that you realize, oh, I, if I fall, I just, it's like Marnie Alton says this and her, um, workouts every day. And I love it. And she tells you to touch the earth and feel the earth. And remember that she will always be there to catch you when you fall. And so if we look at that perspective, we always have something to catch us and we're going to fall. Trust me, we're going to fall. The people who have beautiful practices that you don't think that they have. I mean, Mark Roberts put up a video of him falling out of shit. Like it's just, it's, it's, that's how we learn. If we did not have the friction, we would not have the growth. You know, it's, and it brings us, I, I, I use this example with like a seed. When we go to plant, let's say we're going to plant a, a tree, you know, the tree is, its roots are rising up to the sun, but first we have to take that seed and bury it deep into the ground. We have to take the seed and go deep into the darkness of the earth for the seed to then grow up through the light. And when you go into an exercise, intelligent exercise to work, to work on yourself, that's what you're doing. You're taking that seed and you're intentionally controlled demolition you're intentionally placing yourself in a place of and and there's nothing more vulnerable than exercise for a lot of people and so you're intentionally taking yourself to a place of vulnerability where the ego has to eventually leave so that you can be honest with yourself pain is real that's when we're honest with ourselves we're not lying to ourselves anymore um it's you know stephanie and i were talking about this today and we and I, next time when stephanie will go further into this, a lot of people are very confused by grounding. They think that just going and standing out in the yard for a couple of minutes is grounding. Barefoot, that's really good for you to do on top of everything else. That's not grounding you because it doesn't bring friction. 
Where's the friction? Go stand in the arm bare in the yard barefoot. Yes, of course. But that shouldn't trump your exercise. I was actually just reading the half door material and they talk about it. You have to exercise. And a lot of these ancient civilizations with these deep spiritual practices had exercise. That's why yoga is so old. Yoga is like over 5,000 years old. They knew this. They knew this about the body. And trust me, guys, back in those days, they weren't trying to look good in a bathing suit. There was no Ginny Craig and Weight Watchers. You know, it was, and it's so funny. I love Richard Simmons. I think Richard Simmons is one of my favorite human beings. I just love him. Like even today when I see him, I get emotional. And on Saturday, so our, sorry, Sunday, Sunday is your Sunday fun day in the challenge. And a lot of it, I have his sweat into the oldies from the nineties. I did it the other night in the hotel. I did one of his, I was laughing my ass off. At, at, it was so fun. Um, and you guys know, most of you guys know who Richard Simmons is. If you don't look him up, he was born with a foot deformity. He had a foot deformity when he was born and he gained a bunch of weight. And he took that and he transformed it. That's the alchemist. And so you look at him and what he did, the empire he built. And I was listening, I was watching a documentary on him and how these you know, super famous guy and these people would email him when email first came out and ex explain their situation. And he'd pick the phone up and call him and spend two hours on the phone with him because he genuinely cared. And, and that's what I mean by that compassion and that, that when the heart breaks, the, the, the light can come in. Obviously, he had to learn to have compassion for himself through his foot issues, through working through that from his food addiction. And so that light came through and he had that compassion for other people as well. And so that's the beauty. That's why, you know, that's why Michael Jackson's song, man in the mirror. If we, if we want to shift this globally, then we got to shift ourselves first. Mm -hmm. No one's going to do it for you because nobody else is going to be in your body, but you and your wounds. I want to say this too. Your wounds, those dark places, those are sacred. Don't run from them. Those are sacred. Because that's where you learn what you're really made of. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we do get stuck in that victim mentality and that victim, woe is me. But when we start to work through, and, and I said this last time, we can only feel powerful until we felt powerless. And something too with the exercise on a very physical level that happens. And that's why we focus more on the physical strength and the flexibility. When your body starts to get physically stronger, something in your psyche flips as well, where you start to feel stronger as a person. And you kind of move from feeling like the victim to the survivor, to the, the person who beat it. And when you start to realize that transition is happening and you've had the power all along to make that transition and change that perspective, you then go from feeling powerless to feeling powerful in a very healthy way. Does that make sense? Have you feel, if, experienced that yet, Emmy, where all of a sudden you're starting to feel stronger and things or perceptions are shifting? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was, I was probably one of the worst victim mindset people walking on this planet. Like I just, I could not find my part. My part was allowing, I allowed it. I did not, I had no boundaries. I didn't know what a boundary was. If I had a boundary, I probably wouldn't have enforced it. <laughs> in there, no, in there. <laughs> With a lot of therapy to figure out how to build that wall. <laughs> so yes, yes. So um, I mean, even now, I, I'm still, I'm still very sore. Um, I have been dedicated to my yoga practice. I, I think this is the fifth or sixth week in a row where I have been dedicated to it. Um, I'm still very sore. It's it's getting better, um, but. When I look in the mirror and I can see different areas of my body starting to to tone up a little bit more and and slim down, it's very very encouraging. And even lifting boxes or groceries out of the back of the car, you know, it, it you yank something up that used to be really heavy, and it's like, oh, oh, I'm stronger. Okay, you know. <laughs> 
So it's, yeah. <laughs> well, I do yoga. <laughs> well, you're lifting in yoga, you're lifting your own body weight a mm -hmm. lot. And so you're, you're literally, literally carrying yourself through the practice. Now, I want you to think about that, guys, watching psychologically. When you think you can't support yourself, when you think you're powerless and you're doing, whether it's yoga or a bar or whatever, you literally just carried yourself through the fire. That's a pretty strong person. And what is bravery? Bravery is doing something even when you're shit scared of it. You know, it's the story of Hanuman, the courage. And so if you guys doing the challenge, if you're nervous, I've got a lot, a lot of emails, people being very nervous about the exercise, then you're in the perfect place because that's the courage that's needed. We, mm -hmm. we all trust me. Every time my teacher says, oh, next posture, I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, like, there's <laughs> still like that. No, I'm good. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> there's still that, that new, that, that, that newness that I fear as well. And I've been doing this for 16 years, but we're constantly in that place of challenging ourselves and constantly seeing what we're made of and that in human beings, we're resilient. We're, and I think, I don't know, maybe this is my conspiracy mind, Emmy, but I feel like in the Western world, our controllers created a narrative around exercise so we wouldn't know the true power behind exercise, if you know what I mean. Like they put a, a, a spin on it that it's for being sexy and, you know, for bathing suit season and it's about starving yourself and, you know, being a size zero and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and, um, that's not, that was never what exercise was for ever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about, it's about moving. What's that saying? A rolling stone gathers no moss. So if we are constantly moving the body and moving the joints, starting with our child and child, if children do this, just play with them. Don't make it intense Just make it a play, play, you know, see children will stretch animals will kind of move and stretch, but as adults, we become sedentary. And, and so with that being said, not only does that change our physical fitness level, but it also allows the energy to get stuck and gather that moss and build on itself. But if we get into a habit of exercising every day or most days a week, not only are we keeping ourselves physically healthy, but we're flushing and moving the energy, flushing mm -hmm. and moving the energy constantly because it's never done. The work is never done. And with flushing too, um, remember, we store trauma and wounds in our body. And when that comes out, those toxins are felt as pain. And that's, that's another kind of pain that you can feel when you do this practice. And one thing that has been really helpful for me is castor oil massages. Thank you for bringing that up. That's going to be coming on your Friday. Yes. Yeah. Um, get you some, um, what is it? It's, it's gotta be the pure cold pressed. The darker uh, the oil. The oil. And it, it makes sure it's in a dark jar, not, not like a plastic container, like the real good castor oil will be in a dark bottle. And that's, um, let me move this over here a little bit. Yeah. Okay. On, it'll, be in a, it, it'll be in a dark bottle and, and that's so that the, the light doesn't break it down. Um, so yeah, castor oil is really thick. Yeah. It's really, really thick. Um, so, you know, you're going to be sticky and full of yuckiness, but oh, it's messy. <laughs> it's messy. Yeah. Yeah. If you, we don't have a bathtub. We only have a great big shower in our bathroom. So I just put towels down um, and I'll just sit in there. I'll just that's what I do. myself and sit in the bathroom. So oil baths, it's called oil bathing in India, but you're not literally sitting in a bath, guys. It's just what it's called. And it changed my life. When I learned this practice, it literally changed my life. Now on the challenge, I have you doing this optionally on Friday evenings before your rest day. Okay, because it's going to pull the inflammation out of your body and it's going to knock you out. You're going to sleep for a long time. So basically place towels on the floor of your bathroom, cover your body in castor oil. So your butt ass naked, cover your body in castor oil. And castor oil is good for all doshas. That's why I put it, 
you know, if you want to get doshas specific for me as a vata, I need like almond or sesame seed oil, but castor, I actually prefer castor oil. It, it's good for all doshas. Sit on the, to uh, the towel and slowly massage the oil into your body. The castor oil is used to pull the heat and inflammation out of your body. Sit with the oil on your body for 10 to 60 minutes. If you're new to oil baths, only sit for 10 to 15 minutes because it will knock you out. Um, after the time is up, take a hot shower to remove the oils and then get into bed. Your nose may run due to the heat removing toxins. You will sleep pretty hard tonight. Let yourself sleep so your body can heal itself. So again, I'm doing this right before your Saturday rest day so that you can allow the castor oil to really work and allow your body to recover and recuperate. But yeah, castor oil, I will warn you, especially if you got white girl hair, I wouldn't put the castor oil in your hair. Now in India, they will, if you have, you can go and have it done professionally in India, which is a whole another story for another day. Cause man, they just stick your, their fingers right up your hoo-ha and rub around. And you're like, this is weird, but we're just going to go with it. Um, with the castor oil, but the oil in the hair for girl, it's going to be hard to come out of your hair. So I, what I do is I just pull my hair back and I massage my face even like I'll massage my face, but I try not to get my hair in it. Um, if uh, you can't put coconut oil in your hair, coconut oil isn't good for vatas. I put it in my hair though, because it's just your hair. Um, but you know, but yes, castor oil bathing is amazing. And I sit, I actually sit sometimes up to 90 minutes in an oil bath or oil on me. And some people get very spiritual with it. They'll like meditate or listen to like sound bowl healing while they do it because I do it for so long. I usually watch trashy reality TV shows while I <laughs> still in my oil. Bath. <laughs> but get, get really nasty towels, old towels to sit on. Cause it is very, very messy. Um, you can get some soap nut oil to help you get the oil or uh, soap nut powder. To get if the oil is really thick to get it off of your body the oil i get in india i have to use the soap nut powder to get it off because it's so thick the oil i get here in america i could just get exfoliating soap to get it off because soap nut powder if you use soap nut powder will look someone look like somebody had explosive diarrhea in your bathroom when you're done because it's very thick and, and it just goes everywhere so i'm just warning you guys like if you're if you're in a very new relationship best not to use soap nut powder. So <laughs> just warning you. So, um, but yes, and with this, so I'm going to warn you guys, like the first week of this challenge is pretty basic. You have a lot of journaling to do, but as you get deeper into the challenge and part of me wants to tell you guys who got the template, maybe don't look too far ahead because I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because I put the real hard challenges kind of towards the end so that by that time you're getting more autonomy and you're getting your, your perspective is going to be different than it is in the beginning. Um, because we do have a lot of, um, journaling to do with betrayal. There's a huge section on betrayal, um, childhood trauma. My favorite exercise though, that I have you guys do um, this is my favorite one. It's deeper into the, um, I think it's day 14. Let me see. Let me see here. I have you guys find somebody that you really, really admire in your life. Your, 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 your real life, not your, your, not, not like a celebrity, like someone you actually know in your life, um, that you really admire and that you really, really love. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you write a letter to that person. This is part of your, one of your challenges is to write, here it is. So you're going to write handwrite, not type. It's important that you handwrite because the hand is connected to the heart chakra. You're going to handwrite a letter to the person that you admire, not someone you have a crush on, not someone that you're infatuated with, but someone you admire. And you're going to tell this person the letter, how much you admire them, what you love about them, how much you respect them. And you, you're going to handwrite it. You can sign your name or you can keep it anonymous. You don't have to tell them it's from you. And then you're either going to mail them the letter or you can stick it in their mailbox or put it on their windshield, wiper of their car, whatever you want to do, stick it under their door. It might be your roommate for all. I know you can just tape it on the bathroom wall, whatever. Give it to that person. And then after you do that, you're going to come home and journal more. And you're going to, how did you feel writing the letter? So how did you feel expressing that kindness to someone else? How would you feel if you received a letter like that where someone told you how much they admired you? And then um, I'm going to ask, did you sign your name or leave it anonymous and why? And then I want you to list all the qualities you admire about that person in your own journal. And I'm going to have you read over those qualities five times. So five times read over all the qualities. 
then have you realized these are actually qualities of yourself? I knew it. <laughs> I get emotional when I, because I know. <laughs> I'm not even doing the exercise, but I get emotional because sometimes I think what happens in the shadow work world is that we get so bogged down on the, the dark stuff, the real dark stuff. Like we know that if some, whatever pisses us off about like, like Emmy's any Emmy story, for example, she realized she was projecting her unfinished business with her sister onto another person. And so she realized that that's what that person that came into her life was presenting her with, mm -hmm. with some unhealed wounds. And so we, we understand that in another case scenario, if there's someone that really drives you crazy, usually that's a quality in yourself that you don't like. But what we fail to realize is the things we love about someone else are actually things we love about ourselves mm. that we're seeing in someone else. And so we need to focus on that. And a lot of this stuff with the hearts of, I have you write five things down that you like about yourself. So we're, we're balancing out the hard work with the good stuff too, you know, and, um, one of the last days, like what Emmy was saying, and I have this at the very last, I think it's day 26, the very one at the very end, getting towards the end of the challenge. Um, I'll read it to you guys. I actually put it in red because this is kind of the whole point too of what Emmy was talking about. We'll go ahead and look at it. Um, let's see here. I have you go outside today if the weather permits. See if you can sit in nature for at least 15 minutes. This is on your rest day. So you have an exercise today. While outside, see if you can observe all the stimulation around you. If you're in a city, can you truly listen to all the sounds of the cars, the conversation of those passing by, and the sound of the wind moving between the buildings? If you're in a small town or out in the middle of nowhere, what sounds do you hear? Do you hear the trees moving in the wind? If it's cold, is it cold where you are? Can you breathe into the cold? How does the cold feel on your skin? So recognizing the, this, instead of saying, oh shit, it's cold, actually feel the sensation of the senses picking up on the cold. Same if it's hot. Can you observe the sensations of your nervous system adapting to the environment? Don't judge it as too cold or too hot, just observe. How does it feel not to judge the sensations? Do you relax more into what is when there is no held judgment as to how you personally feel about it? After the experience is over, journal about it. What did you learn from leaning into what is instead of holding on an opinion of what it should be, depending on your likes and dislikes. And so, and I say, this is a huge practice in spiritual awakening. Your opinions are not you. They are just reactions to experiences you've had. Can you fully engage your senses to experience what is being presented to you without holding judgment? So can you, these experiences are things being presented to you. So the friction of the bur mu burning muscles is an experience that's being presented to you. Can you observe it without opinion, without judgment? Next step is to apply this theory to your daily workouts. Can you feel the burning sensations of the muscles working, the breath, the heart quickening, the sweat pouring without judging it? When the emotions yeah. such as uh, anger, joy, frustration, et cetera, come up in your workout, can you fully engage in that emotion, experiencing it, learning from it without judging it? And so this, I'm going to have you do this um, exercise again at day 26. So you're going to be pretty deep into your challenge by the time you do this exercise. And, and I put that at the end, close to the end, because you will have had by day 26, you're going to have gone through a roller coaster of emotions and a roller coaster of journaling about the trail, all this kind of stuff. And so by the t there comes a point of time when you are in this spiritual journey, when your opinions themselves piss you off so much that you're ready to get rid of them. Um, and so that's the whole point of this whole experience is to allow you, you are so much more than your body. Your body is the Shakti. It is the expression of your soul, but it's not your soul. It's not your soul. And you're, you're, it says it in a half before material today, like your body your soul can exist without your body, but your body cannot exist without your soul. And so this body is a beautiful instrument and it's something that can teach us so much about who we are and who we aren't so that our soul then feels more complete and that life. And when you start to really practice this, I mean, looking back on my life, the last, I'll say the last 10 years, I've been doing this for 16 years, but the last 10 years, the way I react to things now are so different than 10 years ago because I see it in a different perspective. Hmm. 
even though it still sucks when things bad things happen, it still sucks, still cry, still get angry. But it's like, okay, what is being presented to me now? Because nothing is ever final. Death isn't real. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. So what is being presented to me? So I'm super excited, you guys. And, and of course we only have like a seat, one seat left on our yoga course, um, that we're going to be doing. So the yoga course and the 30 day challenge are two different things. Although Emmy, get this, I have multiple people that are doing both the yoga online intensive and the 30 day challenge. Awesome. I'm like, (laughs) Flow clap, you know, our brain soul. <laughs> <laughs> so but we have one seat left. So guys, the 30 day challenge, if you're new, the 30 day challenge is totally free. Um, you just email me at, uh, if you want the template and I'll send it to you. And all you need is your body, which you got um, a journal, the internet and castor oil. If you want to do the oil bath, that's optional. Anyway, that's all you need. And journaling can literally be you writing on construction paper from your kid's coloring book if you need to. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I will, there are going to be times for the challenge where you're going to have to go back and reread some of your journal entries to see. And I don't know, do you do that, Emmy? Do you go back and reread stuff? I do that a lot to see how much I've progressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've gone back and read things that I've written and I'm like, I wrote this? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. I'll go back and look at stuff um, from like even a couple years ago. And so I'll, I'll, as I'm reading it about certain situations, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot that happened. But in a journal, it's like the end of the world. Yes. You know? And so that shows you, it's kind of funny. It shows you how temporary stuff is and that this too shall pass. And so we're going to have a lot of times during the, the experience where I'm going to ask you to go back and reread certain journal entries so you can see your own evolution. Um, I know a lot of husband and wives that are doing this together, but awesome. if you feel like punching your spouse at some point, just know that's uh, projection <laughs> 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 and maybe go journal separately, <laughs> you know, so, um, <laughs> you know, but that's incredible. It's incredible that people are doing this. And, um, I just want to say too, and Emmy, we can back this up. I want you guys to know, I in this 30 day challenge, I'm giving you six days a week, a week of exercise. Some of the days are only like 20 minutes, but still you're diving head first. And when it comes to this, cause it's only 30 days. Um, if something happens where you sleep in accidentally one day, or you don't get your exercise in, don't quit. I wrote this knowing full well that for most people, there is going to be a couple activities here and there. They're not going to do. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. The places where we stumble and fall and we mess up are usually where we learn the most. So do not judge yourself too harshly if you miss your exercise that day. Are you miss, you know, going to bed before 10 o'clock that day? Like, don't, this is all an experiment for you to see, like, as the whole back to the beginning of, oh, that's interesting. I accidentally did an exercise today, huh? That's why I feel a little sluggish. Interesting. I'm going to write this down and note this. This is your own. The challenge is just a tool. When the challenge is over, you can throw it away. You are the one that's valuable. You are the subject, not the challenge. It's just a template. That's all it is. It's all it is. And the last challenge I have you do, I'll go ahead. I don't, some spoiler alerts. The last challenge I have you do on the, on the November 30th, the last day, is for you to write your own schedule for December of exercise. So that awesome. you can- and with Thanksgiving, guys, I do have Thanksgiving entered into this. Um, for the Americans, you there. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to be flexible with holidays. I even invite our European, Asian, African friends joining us. I say, you know what? Thursday, November, whatever it is, oh, that's Thanksgiving. Um, go invite some friends out for dinner. Because I want you guys to understand too, like being human beings, yes, we have a, 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 a schedule we follow for the most part, but being human is also learning to be flexible. And Thanksgiving is a time of fellowship and friendship. If you're not an American, again, invite friends out to dinner, invite them over to your house for dinner, have a couple of glasses of wine and have that fellowship. And if you go to bed past 10 o'clock, I think I even wrote, let me look, I think I even wrote about food hangovers. Um, you know, it's fine. It's oh, yeah. totally 
It's total. Let's see here. Where is Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving's, I think, is the 24th this year. For the non Americans, Thanksgiving always falls on the last Thursday of November. Okay. So happy Thanksgiving. This day, like many holidays, might require you to get up extra early to get your workout in and journaling in. So that's another exercise. Like holidays for me, I have to get up even earlier to get this in for me. Um, please know that many people across the, the country are joining you at dark 30. We say that we say that in Ashtanga Yoga that we get up at dark 30 <laughs> to do their workout to keep themselves sane for the holiday. Um, if you've never gotten up early on a holiday to exercise, then this will be a new experience and challenge for you. I ask that you try to heal real hard not to skip your workout this morning. Today, we'll have less, less challenges due to the holiday, but your exercise is top priority, not just for your sanity, but also for your digestive system, right? Make your bed up. All right. I say today you might have to eat later than 7 p.m. because one of the challenges is to, to not snack at night. That's okay. It's a holiday. Be flexible with this one today. Enjoy feasting with your loved ones. Um, and so I give you some options for exercise. Um, and no food journal today due to the holiday, unless you're not an American and you want to continue the, the food journal. And I say you might stay up later than 10 p.m. tonight, and that's okay. Allow yourself to have fellowship and community with friends and family. Tomorrow you can observe how this day affected you. And so that Friday, I say you might feel a little hungover today from the food and maybe from the alcohol. Alcohol is not something I've addressed in this challenge, as this is something that is on a, a person by person basis. It can be used in moderation. You know, if you're not someone that struggles with alcoholism, I'm not going to touch that with you. That's personal issues. It's up to each individual to figure out what works for him or her with alcohol. However, food can definitely cause a hangover, especially yes, if you, absolutely, especially if you're eating foods that you're not used to eating on a daily basis. This is not something to be upset about. If this is something you only experience the day after a holiday, getting more in touch with your body will also make you more aware of how your body is reacting to the food. Today, we are going to work with this to help you explore this more. All right. And so I say this, if you're feeling bloated or hungover from food, do not do yoga today. With an impact of colon, you can bruise your internal organs. Instead, do the 45-minute mm -hmm. bar, 45-minute kickboxing to help flush yourself from the day before. And I say if you're absolutely too hungover to exercise, you can switch out today's exercise challenge with tomorrow, making today your rest day. Okay? So that's going to be up to you. If you feel like you're too gone, then I usually rest the day after a holiday. Because I'm, I'm so, when I, uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, like I'm taking in so much food and alcohol that I don't normally take in and I'm enjoying my time and I stay up late that I always give myself the day after just to rest. Okay. And so I, I don't want people. And then we have the meditation with Emmy. We've got a lot of links with Emmy's Reiki. So if you need to switch it out for the Saturday, you just switch it out. The exercise, no big deal. And of course, again, this comes at the very end of the challenge. So you'll probably feel more confident making those decisions for yourself. At least I hope so. So um, yeah, let me show you the last challenge I give you. Um, so pull out a calendar for the month of December for the next 31 days, create your own challenge each day, schedule an exercise, meditation, journaling, etc. Feel free to use this challenge as a template, but in your personal December challenge, add something that really scares you. Maybe it's joining a yoga shala or taking Reiki classes to get attuned. Maybe it's going back to school or taking a course to learn something new that you've wanted to learn. Maybe it's starting a YouTube channel, or maybe it's picking up the phone and calling someone you need to make amends with. It's all you to you. You have the power to great this. You have, you've had the power all along. And that's the main thing I want you to learn from this, this challenge is that you've had the power all along. You know, I, I, um, I feel like for me, I've, I've been, and I added Marnie Alton's cl cl closing quote here. And remember on those hard days, as Marnie Alton says, reach down and feel the earth. And remember, always makes me emotion, emotional. She will always be there to catch you when you fall. There's all, Mother Earth will always be there to catch you when you fall. And you have had that power all along. And um, I had a lot of people thanking me for taking the time to creating this, this challenge. And it's really my pleasure. You know, I've been so blessed in my life to have so many incredible teachers myself and being able to spend so much time in India and really dive deep into this ancient study. And so I feel like that is what I can do to help the world right now is just to help you with my, and taking in the modern exercises like kick, kick, they, I don't think the ancients were doing kickboxing and bar or sweating to the oldies, but, but my, with my understanding of energetic body, I know how to replace that for you guys. If you don't have yoga around and, um, 
And so that is my gift to you guys. And as I keep telling people, like, I'm just your tech support during this. Emmy, Stephanie, Shanti and Mornay, Catherine, all of us that are supporters are promoting this challenge. We're just tech support. We're the backup dancers. You're the star. You're the one doing this. Okay. Um, I should have added in for the bonus. You know, maybe I know a lot of people will like sign up for a road race. They'll train for a 5k or a 10k. Maybe that's something that you maybe never thought you could do, but towards the end of this challenge, maybe you'll realize it's the beautiful thing. We say that in Ashtanga, that's the magic of Mysore. It's like something that seems impossible all of a sudden starts to become possible. And that's magical. When you think, you know, how many of you sitting right there thought, oh, I could never run a 5k or I could never run a 10k. Well, what if through the course of this challenge, you realize maybe you can, mm -hmm. and maybe at the end of November, that's what you start training for. And you look up training modalities to do a 5k or a 10k. You know, you take that power and you explore that yourself. And I was going to ask, and Emmy, what do you think about this? I kind of wanted to see how this challenge goes. Cause of course I got tears and snot on my laptop guys. So I apologize. I had to just wipe that off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, after the holidays, after Christmas, I'm kind of thinking about doing a 60 day challenge for the group. So we'll see how the 30 day challenge that will look a little bit different because it'll be 60 days, not 30. So things will be a little bit more spread out, but I guess I can't really ask for people to let me know in the comment section yet. Cause we got to see how the 30 day challenge goes first. <laughs> can't I'm down. I'm down. I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah, can't do the can't put the the, uh, the horse in front of the car. So we got to right. hard for the horse. I put the horse front. So um, so I am thinking about doing a sixty day challenge in January and February as well. Um, and that will be if you do the thirty day challenge and you want to do the sixty day challenge, great. But for the month of December, that's all you boo, and I believe in you. Once you start figuring awesome. out what you can do, you take that power back. And I just want to like how many people out there. Now, I, I've never had a weight issue. I've never been the fat kid, anything like that. But I hear this story all the time. How many people out there through this challenge were always the kid that was made fun of because they were overweight. They were never picked from the sports teams, all that kind of stuff. That's, I'm so excited to hear those stories for you to realize, actually, actually, you are the athlete. Mm -hmm. You actually have this in you. You have the exact same muscles you have the exact same tendons and ligaments in your body than the Olympiads do. Yes, this is amazing, Grace. I'm so impressed. I, I, I can't tell you. I thought we were going to get like 10, 15 people sign up for this. Over <laughs> 200 people. You guys, I started sending emails out last night because all of a sudden I was like, I'm going to start sending them out because there's so many people. I got up and then I woke up at like three o'clock this morning and I was like, I got to go back. So I sat up in the kitchen at 3 a.m. And I was like sending templates out to people because I'm so, I'm floored away. I'm floored away. And I know I talked to Morning and Shanti offline. So we haven't finalized this, but what we're thinking about doing is when the um, challenge is over, having all of us who hosted it on a panel and then dropping a link into the chat box, a live show, allowing anybody who does the challenge, if they want to come on and talk about their experience, can just click the link and come on in and talk about their experience. So, um, oh, yeah, that'd be great. I know. And I want people. And I also got to propose to you guys, too, before we sign off. Um, I've been really thinking about how to create a support system for everybody doing the challenge. I've been really thinking about how to do this. Now, I know for a fact that there is a particular YouTuber out there in the truther community who is evil. I know for a fact now that this particular YouTuber purchased um, from a troll farm bots. And these bots were sent out to threaten me, threaten my family, hence why I had to close most of my social media down. I know they're bots, I know it's a troll farm. However, that's extremely dangerous. And I was thinking about opening up a Telegram channel that's private just for people doing the challenge to be able to talk to each other and support each other. However, I'm terrified um, of the bots. I'm terrified of this particular person um, derailing it. Uh, I don't know if I personally would be able to moderate that, that um, channel because of my schedule. Um, 
And if there are people watching that would want to be the moderator, that would want to take that into their hands and moderate the channel, um, I would be interested in handing that over to you and letting you do that for everyone doing the shadow work challenge, just to make sure that there are no bots, that there's no threats in that group. What do you think, Emmy? Do you think that's... I think that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. I just, so if you're interested, because I, I just want to put, I don't, I want to be very forthcoming and open with you guys, because if you want to be the moderator, I don't want you to have to get into something that's in over your head where all of a sudden you've got these bots threatening in the, in the chat. And so maybe I could pick like two or three people to help each other yeah. in case there's any type of threats going on or anything like that. Um, just so people would have an access point to contact each other and vent and support each other. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, cool. So yeah. people watching, let me know if you want to be those moderators. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will let you handle that. Because again, I, I would feel terrible if I was not able to check it because I was researching or filming or whatever. And a bot got in and was terrorizing someone like I would feel terrible about that. So if someone has the time and the availability to like whack a troll, if someone comes in and just move <laughs> them. Um, then I would hand the reins over to you so that everybody else could have a supporting and loving platform to be able to talk themselves through. We're all just walking each other home, guys. This is what I mean when I say it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Emmy, is there any last words? Not that I can think. I'm really excited. This Me is too. awesome. How many I people are? This is awesome. I can't <laughs> I'm going to try like every day during the challenge to post at least like a five minute video just to encourage people to, you know, how's it going? How are you doing? You know, you can also chat in the comment section too, but I'm going to say this. I put this in the challenge with my favorite quotes. You didn't come this far to only come this far. That's a good one. So the fact that you guys sent me emails, that was the first step. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited guys. I know Emmy's steps excited. We're all like super excited about this. We are the storm. You are lightning in a bottle and you're healing. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what is a rut? A rut is doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. With it's also insanity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be the whole turning point for a lot of people. And I'm just, I can't, through the pain that's going to come out of this, through the tears that's going to come out of this, the anger, what I'm most excited about is the light that's also going to come out of this. And I'll say again, I always use it, that match, everything that match needs to light, the light is in it. It comes that way. But that light is never going to light unless that friction happens of striking mm -hmm. that match. You're the match. Everything you need to shine that light, you have already. All you're missing is that friction. And once you strike that match, that, that light is there. Amen, sister. All right, guys, we love you. Signing out from the Victoria Ghost Children. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys. All right, bye. <laughs>